first of all, I want to welcome all our uh, guests today, uh, Mr. Doyle, Mr. O'Connor, and Ms. Ryan here in the room, and to all those who join us by Teams. Um, I hope to keep my questions short to allow you to uh, do the same and that we can go back and forward uh, as much as possible to try and cover as much territory. And I do hope to cover Chapter 11, 12 and 13. That would be the measuring and performance for exchequer spending, the progress on the land aggregation scheme and the pirate mediation scheme, which you have both uh, covered in your, in your opening remarks. Can I start with the... Um, the measuring measuring performance. Uh, you know, the controller Auditor general makes a a very clear assessment in believing that it's not that the measurements weren't uh, well aligned with the nature and the activity of, of the money that was of, of the funding that was being spent. Um, I suppose a, a maybe a, a different way of saying that was perhaps the targets were uh, too easily achieved, and um, that the value for money and the overall impact of the spending w wasn't taken into account. And I just wonder how uh, the department has responded to, to, to that uh, and, and to the measurements and um, what relevant targets uh, do you intend to include in, fut in, future, in future accounts? Uh, good morning, Deputy. Thank you for, for, for that. Um, I'm not quite sure that is what the um, Control and Auditor General said in terms of the targets being easy to achieve because I, I'm, I, I know I, I'm new to the department but I know um, there was a, a, a huge amount of effort gone into uh, to, to achieving targets and, and more obviously has to be done given the uh, nature of the situation around housing. Um, but certainly the, the, the issue on aligning um, the... Um, the targets that are uh, that are published with the actual spend categories, as as, as you say, um, and the department we have accepted um, fully the and we've actually found the the and I know people say this, but I think um, the chapter is is genuinely useful to us. Um, I'm a chartered accountant by profession. I came into the civil service a, a number of years ago into another department, um, so I'm very focused on the need for. Um, Good performance indicators, good, uh, you know, what gets measured gets done, and and we um, uh, and the importance of numbers as we look at uh, what is now a really really considerable spend. I mean, the the, the controller um, pointed out in, in in his report that on social housing, um, from I think it's 2016 to 2019, there's uh, the 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 spend is about two and a half times um, greater. So it is very very important that um, that we measure. Uh, appropriately, the chapter is largely focused on the on the rev, um, which is published each year, um, and there's the, you know we've gone from about nine performance indicators in 2016 to 19 now. Um, so what we are now doing is we're reviewing the um, what 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 is there, how we can um, how we can add to it. In now it's it's coming quite quickly, but the, the the rev that's coming out shortly, we'll probably have a couple of additional indicators uh, in taking taking account of the uh, of the report. Um, and over the course of this year, we look at that in greater detail, with a view then to the next rev having uh, having a more comprehensive set. Um, but we. The point that was being made was that um, the indicators uh, measured the, the output, but in some cases there was a failure to understand both the uh, the economic element of that and, and, and the value for money element of it. Yeah. Let me take just two examples. So, for example, a HAP tenancy uh, as an indicator. Um, very many of us in the room would have dealt with somebody who might have a family that might have gone into homes, availed of emergency accommodation, exited an emergency, emergency accommodation, took up a HAP tenancy, and after 12 months or, or, or a period, was found themselves back in emergency accommodation and back in a situation where they were in a second half tenancy. So, so very clearly a bad value for money there uh, in, in, in terms of it, albeit market-driven. Market um, and I, think, I suppose what many of us would like to see is, is, is a greater focus on the value for money and less on counting what is effectively two exits from homelessness. I, I think I think the HAP example is a particularly good one. I mean, when we talk about the number of additional um, tenancies that will be supported in a given year when the budget comes around or, or, or whatever, we actually we lose sight and we don't necessarily automatically point out this um, this chunk of money is actually covering this number of tenancies. So uh, a, a very valid point. The um, I think just in your uh, initial intervention, you you talked about the the variety of schemes. Um, so I have, um, in coming to the department, trying to get my head around all of the different ways a house can be delivered and all of the different funding mechanisms, 
it's quite a challenge. Um, and uh, I, now they're all tools in the box, as, 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 as we talked about yesterday. Um, and there are sort of multiple funding streams, and we have to report on the funding streams, but actually tying that then to the outputs it is a challenge. It is a difficult process. Um, quite genuinely, I know that the, the controller um, uh, certainly accepted the complexity um, of it. But we have to try and crack that. We have to try and uh, we have to try and uh, align those things better. And uh, and as I say, just given my own background, I think it's particularly important that we do that, given now the amount of money that we've ramped up spending. And I don't want to drift into too deeply into the policy area. I suppose. Uh, in highlighting those issues, I think what was also being highlighted is that the policies themselves were revenue intensive. Um, in, very, in many ways, they were short term because of the, the, the immediate short, shortage, but that their value for money and their efficiency um, and the, the more holistic output in terms of more than just a home, um, that, 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 that they weren't considered either by the policy. So the accounting is, is really just a reflection of what was actually happening in the policy space. Well, I think yeah, some of the some of the measures were um, were adopted in the sense of the emergency that existed. We did a little bit of talking yesterday evening on that in terms of the um, what was available to the state, what what kind of armory was available to the state as as the housing problem um, uh, emerged and the speed of it. Um, certainly, the answer um, has to be much more build and direct delivery, and we have to be um, we have to be showing, I suppose, the balance. At, you know, we talked yesterday about um, over time needing to reduce the HAP numbers because delivery improves. And delivery has significantly improved over um, over the last number of years. It's still got a long way to go, and we have to focus on that. So the measures we use and the way we report it has to, exactly as you say, it has to acknowledge that. Many people in the political space would agree HAP is a, is a uh, total waste of the taxpayers' money uh, over long periods of time, and our failure to wean ourselves off the hap over certainly over the last ten uh, or more years, I think, has been a failure of policy. Um, can I move into uh, the? You talk about the supply of housing, so can I move into the land, land aggregation scheme? And perhaps John might come in on this as well. Um, I suppose, to some degree, we have to cast our mind back to the financial crisis, um, because that was the context of it. Um, I, somebody described this scheme to me as NAMA for local authorities, um, and I suppose you would imagine some drop in value as a result of, of, the, of, that, of that context. But when you look at it, there's 73 sites identified, 72 of them purchased for a total of 1. Uh, 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 sorry, 125 million. And they're now valued in 2018 at 55 million, so you know a halving of, of, of value. So that answers. There's bigger questions around land values and so on at the time. But the bigger issue for me is, is that it was a scheme that was uh, intended to deliver more than three and a half thousand, or just under three and a half thousand units, and we've only delivered 98. So that's a, a big question. Um, and the second thing is, is that it appears that more than half the sites transferred from local authorities to the department to the land aggregation scheme were not suitable uh, for housing. So you'd have to ask yourself the question, why they were purchased in the first place if they're not, not, suit not suitable? Uh, Deputy, I, just in the interest of your time, I'm, I'll defer immediately yes. to, to, to John. Uh, Deputy, first, in terms of the lands uh, that, that were bought off, um, and the lawns were cleared, yeah, the value has gone down. That would be the same for nearly all lands that were, were bought you know, during that period. period. In terms of using the lands, um, it takes time to come up with plans in terms of, of developing them. Our first focus was on, on getting the sites, having them transferred, um, and then talking with the local authorities in terms of putting plans in place to develop, and develop them. The smaller sites were, have been used first. At the end of 2019, yeah, it was approximately 100. Uh, we've now got, that's gone up to well over 200. Very quickly next year, it'll be up to 900 del delivered. So it's, it's accelerating in terms of the delivery of those sites. So you, I think you'll, you'll even see... At, even at 900, you're still less than a third of the, of the total potential of those sites. Um, a number of sites are very large, you know, and we need to get them properly planned in terms of getting a proper mix of housing. Uh, getting the, the right types of housing, so it's not just about the mix, it's about one bedroom, two bedroom, uh, three, three bedroom homes. Uh, and we need to make sure that these are developed pro properly. And particularly in the larger sites, you know, they, they do take 
uh, a number of years, a good number of years in terms of taking, taking them through. through. Uh, and the one thing we don't want to do is underutilise sites that we you know, paid a lot of money for. But they, but they are coming through, uh, Deputy, and you'll see it very rapidly uh, accelerating over the next number of years. Look, and I, I think your point about mix echoes the point that I previously ra raised around the range of policy measures that, that are there. And it can be, re as a local authority member, it can be really difficult delivering mix on big sites, uh, and I have some experience of that. But can you answer then the criticism about why so many of the sites transferred to you have not been possible have not been possible to deliver on in terms of that are I think it was. Uh, 37 were categorised as unlikely to be suitable for near-term development. Uh, I'm, I know I'm asking you to second-guess the local authorities' decision here, but why were we purchasing land? Why were local authorities purchasing land that had a huge debt uh, on them that we were then that the state was then forced to take over uh, in the la in the land, land aggregation scheme, and that now are not suitable? Like, are, will we see some of those lands handed back to local authorities, for example, for parks or or for other other facilities? Uh, Debbie, in the first instance, you know, there were 36 sites identified for immediate uh, development and there's plans in relation to 32 of those sites they've either been built on uh, or, or progressing with. There's another group of, of sites that, from even those secondary sites that are um, being de developed, we went out to local authorities, we went out to approved housing bodies in terms of the suitability of developing uh, those sites. There are a small number at the end of the day that may be not be suitable for, for housing uh, and other use, community uses may be most suitable for, for them. Are you, are you saying that the figure then of 37 and 25 of those being uh, having low demand, you're saying that that's not a correct assessment? Uh, no, I think the report done by the CNAG was a, is a very good uh, overview of, of the land aggregation scheme. I said that the 36 sites were identified for immediate development. What we've done with the other um, sites is we went to the local authorities, we've gone to the approved housing bodies, is are any of these sites suitable for delivery of social housing or affordable housing? And both you know, uh, approved housing bodies and local authorities have identified a number of those sites as being suitable. There are other sites that will take well, let's a, a longer time. Well, let's focus on those time. other sites, because I suppose I, I've asked that question twice, and I appreciate yes. that you are essentially dealing with issues decided outside, outside your yes. remit, but we're saying in a situation where sites bought by local authority, because obviously they wish to, wish to, wish to develop them, that they had the potential of delivering, you know, 50% of the total uh, estimated amount, you went back to those local authorities and said, you know, would you be interested in them? And they said, no, there's low demand. Like the, there's a massive issue there where sites which were purchased for housing, um, we're going back to those same people who purchased them and we're asking them, do you want to develop them? And they're saying no. Um, yeah, Deputy, yeah, let's take an example. You know, if we go to County Cork, there's one, you know, a small piece of land in a village called M Meelan, you know, that Cork County Council said, yeah, they, they thought they had a need for an amount of social housing, so they purchased the, the site. Um, having assessed it a number of years later, they found they haven't got a need, and that site has been sold and transferred for, 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 commu could, for community you, use. Yes. How can any local authority in the country suggest that they have either low demand or no need in the midst of the housing crisis that we're in at the moment? It just seems like a, an amazing assessment. I think, Debbie, it's probably, there's probably a, a, a sense that not that these sites won't be developed, but there's uh, the primary need is elsewhere, um, and it, you know, it's 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 a completely valid and understandable question. But I, I don't think it's necessarily as stark that these sites will not be developed on. They will be developed um, over time through a mix of uh, of the various uh, delivery mechanisms, whether it's AHBs or whether it's uh, whether it's through the local authorities. Um, but it's 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 an absolutely valid question at this point. For, the, for there to be a low demand regarding them, uh, it strikes to me as a complete lack of any sort of ambition by many local authorities to solve the housing crisis. If, if it's not possible to do it now within this decade and the past decade when numbers were so difficult, I can't imagine a time when they would be ambitious to, in, in doing it. But I accept that you're essentially dealing with the outcomes of, the, of those decisions. And I thank you for your time with us today. I think there's a good number of these sites that are, you know, there, there are quite small numbers on, 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 on quite a number of them, which 
you know, in terms of bang for buck or in terms of, 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 of focus on, on, on a development, obviously people are trying to go for the ones that, that deliver a bit more in terms of numbers of units. 